Hi, my name is Chris DiMartino, and I'm a sales and applications engineer at Modalytics. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to design filters using ANSYS New Hertz filter solutions together with Modalytics Microwave Global Models. Let's get started. ANSYS New Hertz Filter Solutions is a tool that can be used to streamline the process of designing lumped element and planar filters. In the case of lumped element filters, one possible design flow is to use filter solutions combined with Modolithics Microwave Global Models for CLR components. This collection of component models is available within the Modolithics Complete Library. Here we have the filter solutions user interface. Shown here is the user friendly interface known as Filter Quick. There's also the more powerful advanced user interface. For this example, we're going to use the Filter Quick interface. However, depending on your requirements, you may want to take advantage of the advanced interface. Now, for this example, we'll design a bandpass filter. We'll specify it as a Chebyshev filter. And of course, we'll select lumped synthesis. We're going to select the equal shunt legs topology and we'll specify it as a fifth order filter. Let's go ahead and enter the parameters. We'll specify a center frequency of 1.1 gigahertz with a pass bandwidth of 300 megahertz. Let's also adjust this pass band ripple. Let's analyze this. And now you can see our synthesized filter along with the frequency response. So now we can begin the process of exporting this filter to ANSYS Electronics Desktop. To do that, let's go ahead and select Setup for AEDT. This will take us to the ANSYS Electronics Desktop interface. The first thing we'll want to do here is select the Modolithics Complete Library. Remember that the analysis we just performed simply included ideal inductor and capacitor models. In contrast, monolithics models account for real-life parasitic, substrate, and solder pad effects to enable designers to accurately predict real-life performance. If you don't have the monolithics complete library, you can request a free trial from the monolithics website. We'll then need to load the Modolithics models. Next, we'll need to select the part series that we want to use. For this design, we'll use the Coilcraft 0201DS series for the inductors, and we'll use the Amotech A60Z series for the capacitors. We'll also need to define the substrate. For this design, we're using 6.6 mil thick Rogers 4350B. Let's go ahead and enter the parameters for that substrate. Also notice that simulate after export is selected to enable ANSYS Electronics Desktop automatically simulate the filter after exporting. Setup Optimizer is also selected so that the optimization setup will be automatically created for us in ANSYS Electronics Desktop. Also notice this Optimize checkbox over here. When we export the filter to ANSYS Electronics Desktop, the generated filter will include the monolithics models along with the necessary microstrip interconnects. As you would expect, the optimization process will involve adjusting the component values to optimal values. On top of that, selecting this Optimize checkbox also allows us to optimize the dimensions of the microstrip interconnects. So the optimization process would involve adjusting both the component values and the microstrip interconnect dimensions. Now you should know that it's generally more effective to first optimize only the component values. In some cases, it may not even be necessary to optimize the interconnect dimensions if part value optimization alone allows the design goals to be met. If you want to optimize the part values of the components without optimizing the interconnect dimensions, just uncheck this Optimize checkbox. 
If you're not satisfied with the performance after optimizing the part values, you can return here and select this Optimize checkbox to enable Interconnect Geometry Optimization. You then click this Update button. After that, you can return to ANSYS Electronics Desktop and perform a second optimization to also adjust the interconnect dimensions. Now that we've said all that, let's go ahead and transfer our design to ANSYS Electronics Desktop. Again, we'll start by only enabling part value optimization. We'll export this by selecting Append to ANSYS Desktop. Now our filter schematic is automatically being created in AEDT. Here's the complete schematic. Notice the Modolithics Microwave Global Models for the capacitors and inductors. Also notice the microstrip interconnects. Here's what the filter's layout looks like. Here are the simulated results of the filter. It's clear that we're not meeting our design goal. Remember that we want a center frequency of 1.1 GHz. The reason why we see a major difference here compared to what we saw earlier in filter solutions is because we're using the monolithics models instead of ideal component models, and we've also incorporated the microstrip interconnects. So we'll need to optimize the filter to achieve our desired performance. Here are the optimization goals that have been automatically created based on the parameters we entered in filter solutions. We have goals set up for the passband S11, as well as S21 in both the lower and upper stop band frequency ranges. Now let's go ahead and optimize this filter. Remember that we're only going to be optimizing the component values. Keep in mind that the optimization is configured so that the part values are only adjusted to real life part values. So let's analyze this to run the optimization. And here are the results after the optimization is complete. We can see that the response looks pretty good. In any case, let's see if we can achieve even better performance by optimizing the interconnect dimensions. So let's go back to filter solutions and let's select this optimize checkbox. We'll then want to click this update button. But before we do, let's look at this drop down menu here. If your project has multiple schematics, you'd want to select the specific one that you want to update. In our case, our project only has one schematic, so we don't need to specify anything here. But this is something you should be aware of. Also know that if you close your ANSYS Electronics Desktop project and then open it again later, Filter Solutions will still maintain a connection with that project. That means that you'll still see all of the schematics from that project here. Okay, so we've enabled interconnect geometry optimization. Let's update the project. And then we'll return to ANSYS Electronics Desktop and run a second optimization. Here are the results after that optimization is complete. You can see that our performance is a little bit better than before because the passband return loss has slightly improved. So our design goal is being met and no further action is needed. For comparison, we can look at the optimized results versus the initial results, which are shown by the dashed black traces. This is the layout of the optimized filter. Now if you want, you can also perform an EM circuit co-simulation as a final verification. Here we've configured the filter layout for an HFSS simulation. Notice the ports that are set up for the component models. After we run the HFSS simulation of the layout, we can then perform the final EM circuit co-simulation. This schematic here includes the HFSS simulation data of the layout along with the monolithics models for all of the components. Here are the final EM circuit co-simulation results. For comparison, we're also showing the optimized circuit simulation results represented by the dashed black traces. The EM circuit co-simulation results didn't deviate much from the circuit simulation results, except in some parts of the stop band.
so the design process is now complete. Well that concludes this video, we hope you found this to be helpful. Also be sure to check out the Modolithics website for app notes, other videos, and more. And finally, you can request a free trial of the Modolithics models by emailing sales at modolithics.com.